Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for our presentation tonight, Cats Got Your Tongue. Karen Steltz has been a transformational mindset and spirituality coach for five years, a brain gym consultant for over 15 years, and has a master's of education in counseling. She has combined the wisdom and compassion game, gained from personally overcoming depression, addiction, childhood trauma, and spiritual confusion with her love of comedy to captivate, engage, and connect with each individual in her audience and every client she serves in a profound and meaningful way. Karen's personal mission is to create a world in which every individual knows his or her own worth and purpose, commits to showing up authentically and unapologetically, and gets off the sidelines and into the arena. Karen is the founder of happinessguru.net, which is dedicated to guiding extraordinary women to lead fully expressed, joyful, connected, fulfilling lives that are grounded in the truth of who they are by regularly exercising courage and taking inspired action. Karen's intention for this webinar is to provide you with three powerful tools that you can use when called upon unexpectedly to speak either in a one-on-one -on -one or group setting. These are valuable skills that will help you maintain your composure in meetings, interviews, medical appointments, new social or professional situations, and even at home. When utilized regularly, these can increase your sense of self-confidence, comfort, ease, and also credibility. So we ask for the next 60 minutes, you suspend any beliefs or opinions you may have come with about yourself or public speaking and open your hearts and mind to new possibilities. Imagine for a moment what would be possible for you if you were able to speak your mind in every situation in a calm, organized, logical, and confident manner? Imagine if you were able to give the wisest version of yourself permission to speak freely without the fear of judgment or rejection. We are inviting you into that possibility. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Karen Stills. Thank you, Sarah. And thank you everybody for being here. So excited. I want to start by sharing a, a story of why this subject is so important to me. So I remember the day that I got this phone call from the vice president of my company saying he was going to be accompanying me on my sales calls. He was coming to Phoenix in two weeks. My heart absolutely sunk. My hands started shaking. My body was just freaking out. And I remember at that time, my biggest fear was picking up the phone and calling a stranger to ask for something, especially a sales appointment. And I remember sitting in my home office and saying to myself, like, what is wrong with me? I really seriously feel like I'm going to die and that I'm defective. I wish I could say that it was in that moment that I decided to change that behavior, but I wasn't quite ready. It was many difficult years later that I made a decision to do something differently. So let me tell you what I did. The first thing that I did was to start talking back to those voices in my head. I noticed that they would be telling me, oh, you're going to die. And we would have some lively discussions along the way. So it was added a bit of comedy and levity to it. And I started to decrease my self beat up just a little bit. The second thing I did was to take some baby steps. Now at the time I was in a 12 step group and we were encouraged to call our sponsor and two other members in the program every single day. Many of these people were complete strangers to me. And 
these calls were still a bit less scary because I knew on a deep level that these people wanted to connect with me. They wanted to be of service. And on an even deeper level, their sobriety might depend on them connecting with me. The third thing I did was to change my energy and my intention around these phone calls. Instead of being worried about like what I was going to get from them, what I wanted them to do for me, I changed and said, what can I do for them? Like, how will they benefit by an experience with me? Through doing that, I was able to create these deep, deeply connected relationships with these clients. And they were actually excited to hear from me. It enabled me to show up in an authentic way and connect. Because of that, I mastered that skill of picking up that 50 pound telephone back in the day. I was able to increase my courage enough to leave corporate America and to start my own coaching business, which I've been doing for about five years. It's amazing now to think back on that scared woman that I was. And when I do, I have so much compassion for anybody who's ever been afraid to speak up and speak out. That is the reason that it's so important to me to teach people how to get over those fears, how to show up authentically as themselves without being afraid of being judged or criticized. So welcome to Cat Got Your Tug. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about me. Sarah already mentioned I'm a spirituality and mindset coach for women that are logical and analytical, and I help them make that journey from their heads to their hearts. This is really important for them to be able to show up authentically and to leave their imprint, their legacy on the world in the way that they choose. Is over the next 40 minutes, and then we're gonna take some Q&A. So just so you know, sit tight. It's gonna be really fun. This is one of my favorite all-time quotes made famous recently by Brene Brown in her TED Talk and her book, Daring Greatly. And basically, it boils down to this. When you are playing the game of life, you're showing up boldly and courageously, are you really going to take advice from the people that are sitting on the sidelines or in the bleachers? Probably not. If you think about in your own life, who are the people that are most likely to criticize or judge you? And are these people that you really look up to and admire or aspire to be like? So I ask you to just contemplate that for a moment. Because a lot of times what our problem is when we're going to public speak, is the fear of being judged or criticized. The benefits of this webinar are super cool. One is I'm going to teach you the strategy that will actually help you hijack the fight, flight, or freeze response. So that deer in the headlights that we get, or we start shaking, or our voice goes out, our brain goes blank. We're going to increase your comfort and confidence while public speaking, which will enable you to think on your feet and maintain your composure. How does that sound? If you are in, type yes in the chat. I'd like to share with you one of the most important things that I've ever learned, and that is to establish an anchor. What is an anchor? It's actually a term from NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming. It's a physical reminder of a mental, emotional, or physiological state that you wish to re-experience. So if you've ever had a time where you have been calm and relaxed, where all is right with the world, then you can tap back into that state by using an anchor. Why is establishing an anchor important? Because you can use your anchor in times of stress or anxiety to hijack the fight or flight response. That's what we were talking about earlier. And you can remain calm 
at peace, 100% present, and have access to every part of your brain. So in order to establish an anchor, I'm going to ask you to do a few things that may be out of your comfort zone, but that's why you're here, right? If you're not an avid meditator, this will be a little different for you. I would like you to know that this is based on scientifically proven techniques. So this is science backed, it's research backed, and it works. It, it enabled me to overcome so many of those negative voices in my head and to establish brand new patterns. So I am going to ask you to just suspend everything you know, that you thought you knew, like we asked you in the beginning. So when we're establishing an anchor, it's important to visualize a time when you were in nature. So maybe, maybe that would be like at a beach or in a forest, a meadow, in the mountains. And I'm gonna invite you to close your eyes if you would. When we're in a relaxed, receptive alpha brainwave state, as the anchor is chosen, the brain will automatically associate this touch point that we're going to talk about with that relaxed state. And the more you use it, the stronger that association becomes until it gets ingrained in our brain as a habit. So if you're one of those people that's asking yourself right now, Karen, what is this anchor thing? I thought this was a public speaking webinar. I assure you that it is. Just stick with me. What we're about to do is going to change your life. So I invite you to sit comfortably with your spine fairly straight and exhale all of the air out of your lungs. Now breathing in through the nose, allow the lungs to fill completely. Exhale slowly through the mouth until your lungs are completely empty. Squeeze out every last bit of oxygen by contracting your abdominal muscles. Let's do that two more times. Breathe in through the nose slowly, allowing the lungs to fill completely. Hold that briefly. Exhale slowly through the mouth, remembering to tighten your ab muscles and squeeze every last bit of air out of your lungs. Allow the lungs to gently fill again, breathing in through the nose. Holding, and let's sigh audibly out through the mouth. <sighs> Keeping the eyes gently closed, I'd like you to imagine a time that you were in nature and felt completely relaxed without a care in the world. Maybe it was in a forest, at the beach, on a mountain, or in a meadow. Just trust the first thing that comes to your mind. Breathe in the fresh, clean air. Notice what sounds are present. Maybe a bird, perhaps a cicada, or maybe just a gentle breeze rustling through the leaves of a tree. Notice how your body feels. Is there any tension or are your muscles relaxed? Now I invite you to go deeper. Inside your body, notice your heart rate. Is it beating slowly and steadily like a distant drum? Notice the feeling of not needing to do anything or be anywhere but right here. Breathe. 
Give yourself permission to fully relax, to trust yourself, to go deeper. In this state of complete relaxation, I invite you to choose a place on your body that represents this state of complete relaxation. Perhaps it's touching the finger and thumb together. Perhaps there's a place that is calling out to you to touch it. Trust that you know what it is and now touch that place. Know that you are completely safe. Be aware that this state is always available to you. Whenever you'd like to return to it, to be this relaxed, you simply touch that place on your body and activate the anchor that you've just established. In this place of complete serenity and safety, I invite you to ask your mind to come up with a symbol that represents this state for you. It may not make sense to your conscious mind, and that's okay. Simply allow your subconscious mind to bring into your awareness the right symbol for you. If it hasn't come up with one, just relax into it. Going even deeper, allow your subconscious mind to suggest a short personal saying of two to five words that will remind you of this state of relaxation whenever you hear it. Trust yourself. Now, in your own time, begin to wiggle your wrists and ankles, your fingers and toes, Coming back into the room, and when you are ready, I invite you to open your eyes. Once you're back, I recommend writing down your anchor, which is the place that you touch on your body. Could be this, could be this, could be whatever. Your symbol and your short personal saying. We're going to move on to our actual tips. So this is impromptu speaking tip number one, and it is to ground yourself in the present moment. Hopefully you guys are still awake. The first thing, when someone asks you a question and you're caught off guard, first thing that I would love for you to do is to take a slow, deep breath. You have time. People don't expect you to speak right away unless you are not thinking about your response. The next thing is to activate your anchor. So you can do this under a table, whatever you, you chose, know that that's correct. Recite your personal statement. Visualize your symbol. So these can all be done simultaneously or you can do them in succession. So you can do them all at the same time or one after the other. And the last thing is to quickly look around the room and identify four objects that are present. This just brings you right into the present moment. Instead of worrying about what you're gonna say, you're just right there and you're present and it calms down your physiology. And that's what we want, right? We don't wanna freeze or be ready to fight or run out of the room. We want to be in our bodies, completely present with our minds working optimally, not half of our brain shut down because we're stressed out. So it's impromptu speaking, number, tip number one is to ground yourself in the present moment. And that's using that anchor that we just established. This is Ron Ellett. He's actually in my Toastmasters club. And he was nice enough to write this for us. And he said before coming to Toastmasters, when he was called upon to, to speak, he would experience a very strong physiological response 
His heart would beat quickly. His brain felt like it was going a thousand miles an hour. His hands got sweaty. He had shortness of breath and had a pit in his stomach. After being a member for, he's really fairly new. After just a few months, he writes, I have a better handle on those nerves, which gives me confidence I did not have before. Public speaking isn't the scary monster that it used to be. I'm more myself. And that's really the best we can help hope for, right? To be ourselves. Impromptu speaking tip number two, restate the question. This will buy you a little bit of time. Take a slow, deep breath. You may notice that theme. I probably would say that for every tip, right? Restate the question. Hmm, that's a good question. Where, who was the most influential person in my life growing up? Pretty simple. Pause and consider what's being asked. People learn to appreciate the pauses. They think you have actually considered the question. You're not just blabbing and they're more likely to listen to you after a pause. So use those to your advantage. Answer slowly and thoughtfully. Slow down, enunciate certain words. Take pauses before and after important points. This buys you time and it also tricks your physiology into thinking that you are calm. This is Bernadette. She has been in Toastmasters for quite a while. And she says before she joined, she always thought she had to fill that awkward silence. Immediately with talking, she said she was like freaked out and scared. And then she would engage in self beat up. Like, what did I even say? I don't even know. She wouldn't even remember. After joining, she learned to slow way down. And she feels better about herself because she can handle unexpected situations. She said it even improved her social anxiety. Impromptu speaking tip number three, agree, commit, and deflect. The first thing is agree with the person. This is if you get a question and you have no idea what the answer is. Say somebody asks you, did you do that research on that project that I told you about? So agree that it is is an important issue that deserves your attention. Commit to gathering the resources to answer and discuss the issue fully and be in completion by a specific date and time. So that really means you're being accountable. When you put your butt on the line with a specific date and time, people know you're serious. And then deflect, this is the fun part. So you get to play with this one. So while I have your attention, let me ask you about this. So you totally change the subject. It's like, look at the monkey. You know, look at that thing over there. You're distracting them from what they asked. And you get to play with this and have fun with it. I think you'll like it once you get to it. So let's review. Tip number one, ground yourself in the present. How do we do that? We activate our anchor. We state our saying, our personal saying, and we visualize our symbol. We can look around the room and find three or four objects that will bring us right back to that present moment. Tip number two, restate the question. When you are doing this, be sure to enunciate and speak slowly. Another tip that we use in in our Toastmasters Club when we are in person is we walk to the front of the room slowly (laughs) because that buys us time as well. So restate the question, make sure you understood it, enunciate certain words for emphasis and pause before and after important points. Tip number three, agree, commit and deflect. So that one is, yes, I agree. This this is an important issue and it's important to me as well. I agree, I commit to having the answer for this by this date at this time. 
and deflect. While I have your attention, let me ask you about this other issue. At this point, I invite you to play with these tools, to have fun with them. Like think of yourself like a scientist or a researcher and just have a curious mind. Like, a, hmm, I wonder what will happen if I try this? And when you can do that without attachment, I think you're gonna enjoy this a lot. So at this point, many of you may be asking yourselves, well, now what? The way I see it is you have three choices. In order to practice these new skills and to really integrate them into your being, you can take what you've learned here tonight and go apply it, which is go it alone. Or you can have the best of intentions of taking everything you've learned here tonight and applying it and go back to your comfort or discomfort zone and do nothing. Or, and this is the one that I sincerely hope you'll consider, you can join Toastmasters. You can start visiting different Toastmasters clubs with no obligation. You don't have to join, you don't have to pay anything. You can just visit and you can see which one that you jive with, which one has the culture and the environment and the people that are your people. I visited five or six Toastmasters clubs before I chose my home. And now I have it. I love my Toastmasters group. In order to find a club, you are going to go to toastmasters.org. And Sarah is going to pop that link into the chat. You hit the find a club at the top there. I'll move my arrow. Hopefully you can see that. And then it gives you the option of how far away you're willing to travel. At this point, it doesn't matter, right? I encourage you to choose one that's local and that you would actually drive to when things open up because these people are, are gonna be your people very soon. If you have any questions about how to find a club or any questions at all about Toastmasters in general, what you could do is email cgd at aztoastmasters.org. And Karen Hewitt, oh my goodness, Karen Hewitt will be happy to answer any of your questions. Some of you may be thinking at this point, when I put this slide up, the benefits of joining Toastmasters, are you insane? I am nervous getting up in front of my coworkers. Why in the world would I put myself into that situation where I'm gonna be called upon to speak in front of people? Others of you may be thinking, Karen, I do not wanna be a public speaker. I am nervous enough just talking in front of my friends. I'm inviting you to question whatever those voices in your head are telling you. Yes, they want to keep you safe. However, their method for doing so has landed you in this webinar. That tells me that what you've been doing so far hasn't been working so well and that you would like things to be different. So imagine with me for a moment, seeing yourself remembering and using all of the strategies that you have learned here in the last hour. How are you feeling? What does the expression on your face convey? How are others perceiving you? What opens up for you that wasn't there before? What is possible for you now? I invite you to live in that place of possibility. Really connect to that version of yourself. That is who you really are. When those little fear voices kick in, I invite you to take a journey in your mind. Go back to that relaxing place in nature where all is right with the world. Activate your anchor, visualize your symbol, and recite your personal stay, saying, in that state, ask yourself, what do I really want? 
If the answer is that you would like to have more comfort and confidence when speaking, be less self-conscious in social or professional settings, develop leadership skills, be able to think on your feet, express yourself more authentically, gain more respect, improve your career advancement opportunities, enjoy better relationships, learn new valuable communication skills, or maintain your composure in tough situations, then I invite you to consider joining a local Toastmasters club. There, you will have a safe, encouraging place to practice those skills. This will build your confidence. You will become an effective communicator. You will also improve your active listening and effective evaluation skills. You will learn to speak for different purposes, to educate, to inform, to inspire, you'll be able to respond intelligently and calmly. You will lead meetings with authority and assurance. I'd like to share with you one more story. The story is about a young woman in her 20s who had a dream of being a, an inspirational public speaker. She wrote on a little note card that she read every day for a very long time. I am a well-known inspirational speaker, creating a huge impact in the world. She forgot about that dream and went on with her life. 25 years later, she was going through a drawer underneath some jewelry that she didn't wear anymore. She found that note card. And as she looked at it, a touch of sadness arose in her, but just for a moment. And then this loud, powerful voice rose up and said, if not now, then when? That young woman was me. I recently joined Toastmasters less than a year ago. And I have rekindled my commitment to make that dream a reality, to be a well-known inspirational public speaker and to have an impact in the world. Now, not everybody wants to be a public speaker. That's not what this club's about. What it is about is not waiting. It's doing the hard thing. It's being courageous. I invite you to imagine like, who is that person that you've always wanted to be? Would that person benefit by having better communication skills and better speaking skills? If the answer is yes, I invite you to take action today. Don't wait. Don't wait 25 years like I did. Don't let your dreams die inside of you. Life is now. Thank you. At this point, we will take questions from you. So go ahead and type them in the chat. Thank you so much, Karen, for sharing. We really appreciate you and all the wisdom. We do have a couple of questions in the chat for you, if you wouldn't mind answering. The first one is, what if you don't understand the question? When somebody asks you that question, what if you don't understand? How would you proceed with that? I would do my slow deep breath and say, would you mind stating that in another way? Because it's, it's not, I'm not really understanding that. Karen, do you have anything else you would add to that? That is fantastic advice, Karen. Another way you can do it is so similar. You can say, you know, that is a great question. I want to make sure that I understand exactly what you like. Could you rephrase it in a different way so I can give you my best possible answer? Nice. Yeah, I love that. And everyone, I want to introduce you to that other voice, Karen Hewitt. Karen Hewitt is our District 3 
Toastmaster uh, Club Growth Director, and she has helped us to put on this webinar. We do have two Karens, so that's, you know, if you're a little confused, we're, we're both, they're both named Karen. We do have one more, two more questions in the chat. The next question is, how long is too long for taking that first moment? Oh, yes. There is, there is that fine line between being thoughtful and being the deer in the headlights. All right. So what I would say to that is anything up to five seconds is okay. And at that point, it's a good idea to make some noise. Even if you yell fire. <laughs> yeah, what do you have to say to that? That's great. <laughs> Anything to add, Karen Hewitt? I, I actually think that five second rule is fantastic. And then you can buy yourself a little more time by saying, that is a great question. I would like to answer that question by, and it's the fact that you're communicating and being clear and enunciated. And I know people are probably going, but five seconds isn't so long. Trust me, when you feel put on the spot, five seconds is a lifetime. Yes. I agree. You will have enough time. You'll, you'll be okay. Great points. All right. The next question is regarding your tip number three. Can you give us an example on how it would work in a business meeting? And yes. how do you practice impromptu speaking in Toastmasters? Oh, ooh, I like that question. In a business meeting, if somebody, say you forgot about a deadline, for example, or somebody brings up a project that you are supposed to know about or you may have not known about it all, but they assumed you knew about, then you could use that tactic. So they say this thing to you, like, um, what do you, even if they ask your opinion, what's your opinion on the, the Brophy case? You'd be like, I agree that, or you don't have to say that word, but you say like, yes, the Brophy case, that's an important one. And I'd like to get you the best information that I can. I would like to have a few moments to gather myself and gather some research, some resources to provide you with the best answer because I haven't really analyzed that yet. And I will do that by this date and time. And then you get to say, look at the monkey over here. While I have your attention, let me ask you about this. Does that make sense? And then how we practice impromptu speaking in Toastmasters is every meeting we have a theme set by the Toastmaster, which is essentially the host of the meeting. They keep things running smoothly. And we have a table topics master who chooses the questions based on the theme. And you really don't know who's going to be called upon or which question you may be answered, asked. I apologize. Yeah, so you really get to practice all of these skills in a matter of seconds. And then you have one to two minutes to speak and give your answer in a way that is concise and follows the rules of speaking. Would you like to add anything, Karen Hewitt? Happily, thank you so much. So one thing I would like to add is with, I personally love the agree, commit, and deflect. It's something I use all of the time. And when I'm using it in a business meeting, let's say they ask me, hey, did you have a look at that article? And maybe I glanced over it, but I haven't fully paid attention to it. I'll say something like, you know what? I had a quick look at the article. I haven't gone into all the detail I would like, but I will have something back to you probably by a close of business today. You know, while I have you, there was that WordPress update last week. I'm noticing a few glitches. Have you seen anything as well? And that way I've got my particular 
issue out into the air. And the person who asked me the question is feeling like I respected their time and I'm willing to give them their answer. I just didn't have it at that particular moment. And that impromptu speaking in Toastmasters every single week, we never know who's going to get called on. And the questions can be really simple. I have seen questions such as, tell us about the book that you're currently reading. Two, do you think summer will last any longer? And in some of our business meetings, they will ask for, what is your opinion on the current stock exchange? All depends on where you're going and what you're really looking to work with it. And the added bonus is we offer a mentor system. So you're not just practicing it on the spot. You have someone who is established educated in this they understand all the ins and outs and they become a personal mentor to you and help you guide yourself through these things is a self-paced learning system that can really help you crush any of your goals yeah yeah that's so true and I was thinking like when you actually become a member of Toastmasters you get to take roles on in the meeting which get your speaking like feet wet, like incrementally, because you might take on the role of the grammarian. So you get to pay attention to people's uses of grammar, their particularly good uses and their poor uses. And you get to choose what's the word of the day and see who uses it, which is kind of a fun game. There are many, many roles. One that scared me when I was starting was that of evaluator. And it really has been the one that has helped me grow the most as a speaker and as a boss when I have employees, because you learn how to give people constructive feedback, like tell them what they're doing, all the great things they did, and then a couple of things they could improve on. And then you end with something that's fabulous that they did. And it really goes a long way. The other benefits of actually joining is you get to deliver prepared speeches and be part of the mentorship program. You get to have a mentor and then later you get to actually mentor someone. So there, there's so many benefits. And then when you show up every week to your meeting, these people become your friends and your family members because you share things with them that you might share with nobody else. So it creates this level of intimacy that you might not have anywhere else. It's very cool. Well, thank you very much, Karen and Karen. I don't know about you, but I learned a lot about how to be more prepared when I am put on the spot, especially in the doctor's office. I hadn't thought about that one, but oftentimes the doctor or nurse asks a question and I need to really think about that. I appreciate you both being here. I am going to post in the chat uh, the website that you can find Karen at. And then we already posted the Toastmasters.org website if you are interested in more information about Toastmasters. Karen Hewitt, is there anything you would like to add to close us out tonight? Thank you so much, Sarah. And Karen, thank you. You gave a lot of information. And what I really love, and the reason we're doing these webinars and having many different people speak, is we all have different perceptions of what is happening. And Toastmasters is not a one size fits all like, hey, we're going to throw you in this lesson and it's supposed to work for everybody. It is a fully developed system that is as personal to you as it in any way possible. You select the path you want to go through, you select your electives, you completely customize this to your journey and what you need to get from it. Arizona Toastmasters is a fabulous organization and I am going to invite you to go to the toastmasters.org link that is in the chat and also down below if you are catching this on the replay and find a club near you. And should you join a club, there is a special prize that you saw on that sign-up page. Don't forget to, that is there for you. 
if you have any questions or you would like to have a conversation with someone about joining a club, maybe you're looking at it and you're like, I, I, I just, I don't know. I don't know which one I need to join. I have no idea. You can email me at cgd at aztoastmasters.org and I'll be more than happy to connect you with the right person to help you along that journey. We've really appreciated you spending the time with us tonight and I am, again, grateful, Karen, for you for sharing your insights and your information. You gave three amazing tips and thank you, Sarah, for being our host. And with that, we hope to see you at the next webinar, which is always on the last Tuesday of the month at 7 p.m. Arizona time. And we're going to have a fabulous topic for you. Look for that information coming soon. Thank you, everybody. Really appreciate you being here with me, with us and giving us your time. We hope you got a lot out of it and that you will join Toastmasters. It's so much fun. All right. Love you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. Drive safe. <laughs>